you really have to look closely at this painting to uncover all of its secrets. Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel, welcome to another vlog. If this is your first time here, my name is Tatiana and I deliver fast and fresh content on works of art from all around the world. So if you enjoy watching my content, don't forget to subscribe to my channel to see more from me. So in today's vlog, we're going to be traveling all the way to Armenia through our exploration of this painting by the Armenian artist Sarkis Halmabashian. Now before I tell you all about this painting, let me just tell you a little bit about Hamabashan himself. He was born in 1956 in Gyumri in Armenia. In 1969 he graduated from the School of Fine Arts in Gyumri and then in 1975 he completed his artistic training at the Panos Telmezian Fine Art College in Yerevan. Since the year 1978 he has participated in countless national and international exhibitions in Armenia, Italy, France, Russia, Cyprus, Germany, the UK and America to name but a few countries. Most of his paintings are currently displayed in the Modern Art Museum of Armenia as well as in private collections all around the globe. I chose to talk about Hamar Bashan today because his style is utterly unique. His paintings feature mesmerizing combinations of different styles and techniques that recall Armenian miniature painting, Byzantine and Orthodox iconography, Russian avant-garde paintings and Italian early Renaissance art. He is one of the most important artists of Armenia and I can't wait to talk about my favorite painting of his with you today. So let's dive right in. The painting was executed in 2000 and is entitled New Sunday. This title refers to an important feast day in Armenia. This painting is tumultuous, unsettling and captivating and what I absolutely love about it is that its contents are revealed layer by layer. I don't even know where to begin. This painting is composed of many layers of oil paint and other media, including text and stenciled outlines, all superimposed on top of one another. Among the plethora of colours, textures and impasto, eight figures reveal themselves. To the far right, there is an angel sporting wings and a halo set against a gold rectangular backdrop. With his weight on his right leg, he leans forward and appears to be interacting with the two figures to his left. He presents them with something cradled in both his hands. One of these figures appears to be a soldier composed entirely of a rusty grey colour. His form is skeletal, almost translucent. To his immediate right, there is a figure with a halo and a red cloak that is visible through the soldier's transparent body that appears to be dissolving away. His face is bathed in what I would describe as a heavenly yellow. Are these two figures meant to represent saint and sinner depicted side by side? I'm not entirely sure. My personal interpretation is that these two figures are meant to represent the same person, namely a soldier who has died and who has been turned into a saint by the angel to the far right. So what we are witnessing is the dissolving of his earthly form and its metamorphosis into that of a saintly figure. In the center of the composition, there appears to be a seated female figure, an assumption I'm making based on what looks like her elaborate dress. She is in possession of a book which is being held open before her body. Like the other figures of the painting, she is also an ambiguous character. Can she be seen to represent justice? On the far left, there is a pauper, a poor man who appears to be naked. A parrot perches on his right bent arm. And if you look closely, you will also notice a deer's head peeking out from behind the woman's elaborate dress. Much like the woman in the centre of the composition, he stares directly outwards at us, the viewer, which is quite disconcerting. To his right, another ambiguous figure in profile emerges from the darkness. He is dressed in a red cloak and what appears to be a red bishop's hat. Above these two figures, the silhouette of a soldier emerges from behind the waterfall of oil streaks. He holds a bow and is in the process of launching an arrow. Now perhaps the most disturbing figure of all can be found in a circular outline directly above the seated woman in the centre of the composition. This hooded figure is obscured by his heavy folds of drapery and by streaks of blue paint. I'm inclined to argue that this figure represents some sort of god or saintly presence. Halmabashian's figures are symbolic. They portray stereotypes, archetypes, as opposed to specific identities. This is a common feature in his artwork. The priest, the pauper, the saint, the sinner. These are some of the figures that appear again and again in Halmabashian's paintings. Another feature to point out is that while his figures are primarily figurative, he presents a very distorted and very personal view of humanity. 
In other words, we recognize these forms as figures, but they don't match our perception of reality, how we see each other and fellow humans. The figure's features verge on being demonic and comical, and that is part of what makes this painting so intoxicating. As Hamal Bashian himself has stated, he is fascinated with what he refers to as the tragic comedy of human life, and this is what the forms of these figures might be expressing. At the top of the canvas, there are two stenciled forms. These add dimension and texture to the canvas. They also add to the painting's sense of anachronistic confusion. In this painting's composition, we have Byzantine-looking religious figures placed alongside more regular people and modern-day materials. Hamal Bashan is conflating past and present in this painting. Indeed, it is hard to pin down a sense of time. This, again, is another common feature of Hamal Bashian's artwork, and its aim is to show the essential sameness of our human experience, regardless of which era we are living in. So in this sense, Hamal Bashian is commenting on universality, the idea that certain human emotions, experiences and ideals are common to all times. I'd like to quote a sentence of his. For me, time does not exist. Past, present and future are one, reflections of each other. The abstract streaks of paint below these two stenciled forms that bleed into the rest of the painting provide an organic quality to this work of art. Hamla Bashan actually works quite organically. He does not begin with sketches or drawings, but begins by working straight onto the canvas itself. And at times, he will even apply paint directly from the tube. Then, as the artwork progresses, he might add stencils, paper and other materials such as photographs and text, manipulating them into the surface of the painting. At the top left of the painting, the form of a church or cathedral surfaces through the overlapping paints. This religious building introduces an important theme in this painting. Religion. The religious figures in the painting, namely the angel and the saint, evoke the two-dimensional figures of Armenian Orthodox religious art. The angel is quite stylized. Another way in which this painting recalls Armenian Byzantine art and medieval miniature paintings is through the conscious lack of perspective. These figures are not bound to the laws of perspective, they merely appear on the surface of the canvas, blending with one another and their surroundings. And yet, they have been given a different form of dimension through the use of impasto. So these figures, which are essentially Byzantine icons, have been brought to life. These religious undertones hark back to the importance of Christianity in Armenia, the first country in the entire world to adopt Christianity as its official religion from the very first years of the 4th century. In contrast to these Byzantine-looking figures, the rest of Hamal Bashan's painted characters are more abstract in their rendition, particularly the pulpit to the far left whose features and limbs have been reduced to coarse lines of paint. This again shows Halma Bashan's interesting medley of styles that are all present in this painting. This work of art makes me think of the experience of having a very strange dream that feels hyper real when you are living it. These are not naturalistic figures, yet they feel alive because of the vivid colors and Halma Bashan's use of layering and texture. Halma Bashan claims that his figures and images rise unconsciously, and that is certainly the impression you get looking at this painting. The hazy and mangled forms of the painting seem to emerge from distant memories of different times that tend to mesh together. And yet, at the same time, the different techniques that he has employed reveal the artifice of his creative process. The faces that emerge through textured lines and shapes are nightmarish, yet also real. We feel their presences as they ooze out of the picture plane. I am in love with the complexity of this painting. Not only is it visually exciting and captivating, you really need to peel back its layers to understand its meaning. The figures and forms of the painting are set against a collage of abstract geometrical shapes of different colors, and this hints towards the influence of Russian avant-garde art in Hanna Bashan's paintings. So, as we have seen, this painting is a chaotic and disoriented mix of strange and ambiguous figures arising from a painting composed of various media. This painted confusion and sense of turmoil could be seen in light of Hamal Bashan's personal life and experiences. Hamal Bashan suffered personal hardship and tragedy during his life, and indeed all the elements of the painting somehow reflect or connect to these traumatic events. The soldiers evoke the time when he served in the Soviet army. In addition, the sense of turmoil and turbulence in the painting can be seen to reflect his traumatic experience of the destructive earthquake that hit his native city of Gyumri in December of 1988, killing at least 25,000 people. While these elements and the purposefully chaotic style of this painting certainly reflect Hamal Bashan's personal tragedies, 
I believe that, in a grander sense, the turbulent style of this painting can be read in light of the Armenian Genocide of 1915 to 1917 and its repercussions, namely the intergenerational trauma that Armenians all over the globe feel to this day. At this stage, I want to point out a crucial part of the painting's contents. At the top of the painting, barely visible at first glance, there are letters surfacing through the paint. After careful examination, I uncovered the following words. May the memory of the righteous be blessed eternally. Amen. In the context of Armenia and the Armenian Church, these words form the concluding sentence in the annual ceremony of canonization commemorating the many lives lost in the Armenian Genocide. So I think this confirms the very real reference to the Armenian Genocide that Hamabashian, as an heir to those who suffered, is very keen on expressing in this painting. The painting, with its vivid colours, its mixing pot of techniques, styles, times and figures, can be seen to echo the psychological trauma and displacement felt by many Armenians, including myself, as a result of the tragedy. As Halma Bashian himself has stated, the repercussions of the genocide implicitly affect his art, as well as the art of Armenians in general. The whole painting is essentially a strange and captivating medley of strange shapes, religious and non-religious figures, textures, animals, time periods, mediums. In other words, a painterly chaos that echoes the sense of displacement that haunts all Armenians to this day. All right, that is it for me today. I really hope you enjoyed learning about Hamabashan. Let me know your comments and interpretations concerning this painting in the comment section down below. And finally, if you'd like to see more videos from me, please don't forget to subscribe to this channel and to click that notification bell so that you don't miss any further content. As always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.